Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last time I did uh, two videos, two parts of uh, unboxing of this scope. So the first part was about uh, unboxing of the main scope and the uh, second part uh, was about some accessories I uh, bought for this uh, scope. And today I want to pimp this scope a little. So first I want to um, install an automatic electronic focuser. The second thing is I want to install my um, camera, uh, most probably with an off-axis guider. And I will also talk a little bit about um, my back focus. And the third thing I want to test today is uh, doing a collimation of the scope. So in the first part we will need a uh, our yeah, scope of course with the focuser and we will also need our uh, electronic focuser. In this case it's a CWO EEF focuser and what you will also need is a uh, Allen key here. Yeah. This comes with your scope. So there's a the thing, um, you will not install your focuser here on this uh, fine focusing unit but you will install your focuser here to so we will remove this part here. The thing is, uh, if you have your focuser and your spacer, focuser, spacer, on this side, you, we will remove this part and you will do like that. And you might already can see the problem. I saw this in a video and I don't really like this uh, because of balance. So you will have a quite heavy focuser here hanging and you will also most probably get some yeah, problems, let's say, when you uh, use a, a flat panel to do your uh, flats here. Yeah, you will ha have problems with that. That's why we need to change the orientation here. So we have different screws here. I think I will uh, remove uh, this screw, this screw, this screw and th this screw. So the screws in the corner. And then I will just um, rotate it 180 degrees. So here will be the fine focusing unit and here the other uh, side of the focuser. And then I will most probably install it like that. I'm not sure yet about the other screws. I think um, yeah, this one I know for sure. This is to fix the, um, the tube, the focusing tube. This I know for sure, and this most probably press uh, presses against uh, the rest of the focusing unit. And now let's try, oh yeah, that's okay. So that's actually very interesting. Um, ah, here you can see it, interesting. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so these two screws are, are most probably responsible to have this part attached and this screw uh, it's just most probably pressing against this part. Uh, interesting. Okay. So what I will most probably do is just remove this screw and then I have two, uh, two screws uh, to attach my focuser. Um, yeah. I think it's not ideal. Ideal. Uh, it would be nice to have something uh, like in this orientation here or cross crosswise. I suppose in that orientation with the fine focusing unit here, we want to attach our focuser here. So you just rotate it 180 degrees and just reattach it again. Okay, I messed up the sound. So keep everything very flexible. Then just attach the spacer here like that. It's all very flexible. 
Then you take two fitting screws here for your telescope. And yeah, it's still flexible. And just attach the screws here like that. Very flexible. Here two screws as well. And now I just tighten these screws and these screws and then behind here with the spacer. And then it's very solid. And here we go. I already uh, did a video, very detailed video about this here. You can find it here. Uh, please watch it. Um, I hope it will help you. I think I, I explained it uh, quite, uh, yeah, quite clear, I hope, and understandable. Yeah, it looks like I have the same value for the backlash. And so I will try the same settings in Nina uh, with regard to autofocusing and um, step size and so on. Okay, so I attached the EEF and before I will uh, attach my camera and speak about back focus, uh, I want to speak about uh, collimation. Collimation is actually just a fancy word for, yeah, let's say alignment of your uh, main mirror and your secondary mirror. So as I explained last time, so light will come in through the opening of the telescope here at this end. You have your main mirror will be reflected, light will be reflected here and uh, will reach your secondary mirror here, it's a smaller one, and will be uh, reflected uh, outwards in the direction of the focusing unit, so or your sensor, your eye or a camera. And as far as I know, you can do collimation at least two, in two ways. So first thing is you will, uh, have, for example, you, you will uh, have a star in your, your field of view, let's say, and you will, um, by intention, uh, will uh, defocus the star and you will get a special uh, yeah, kind of a pattern. And then you have to make sure that you have uh, these rings uh, aligned to each other and uh, really in the, in the center of each other. Uh, this is one thing. I will use such a laser collimator here. And um, I would also recommend not to use the cheapest laser collimator because this instrument um, is really important to have a, a good um, or even very good alignment of your uh, two mirrors to each other. If you buy a very cheap laser collimator, um, the laser is not well aligned in this uh, collimator. So there's no sense to use a fancy laser collimator if the laser is not well aligned in this uh, housing. There are some screws. Hope you can see this here, here, and here uh, to align the laser. So this is brand new. This should be actually well aligned the laser. Uh, so I will not change anything here. To test this, uh, I will, yeah. Well, I have it almost centered here. Now I will just fix the collimator using my hand like this and I will rotate this. And now it's important, of course the laser dot will go like left and right, but it's the same plane, let's say. If it would go up and down, this would be not a very good sign. That means, that would mean uh, the laser is not well aligned, but if you know slowly rotate this, the collimator, you can see that it's always in the center or in the same plane. It will not make a circle and will go up or down or something. That means uh, the laser is uh, quite well uh, aligned and this is important. Otherwise, if it's not well aligned, 
we have to use uh, these three uh, screws here to reposition the laser within this housing. Another thing which is uh, quite important is um, last time when I unboxed uh, the scope, I also uh, showed you these two screws here. Okay, so if you're now um, using an um, eyepiece, for example, you have, or another thing, maybe a, a camera or something, so you have two problems here, or two main problems. So first, you will fix uh, the, yeah, for example, the eyepiece here using these two screws. And by tightening using these screws, you will, uh, yeah, create a mark on your eyepiece. So you will also have scratches. This is actually not very nice. Uh, but the other thing is also that um, now it could happen that you have a yeah, shift in orientation here. Let's say you have your let's say that's your eyepiece and you have only two screws. Um, this could be really uh, yeah not well positioned. Let's say you will have some marks on your eyepiece or camera, for example. You will have uh, yeah stretch, scratches most probably and you will have a, not a proper positioning of whatever you put in here. So that's why I bought uh, this adapter here. It's a two inch adapter. And um, yeah, actually I bought it uh, together with the scope. I just forgot to uh, show you in the last uh, in the unboxing video. So this part, this adapter will replace uh, this ring here. You will also have only two screws but the nice thing is you have such a so-called compression ring. That means when you tighten these screws here, uh, the ring will be compressed, as the name suggests, that you have a better, um, yeah, let's say, distribution of your force. Uh, so you will not have only the, the, the pressure here and here, but due to the compression ring, you will have a better distribution here. And this will also help you to yeah, have a better positioning of whatever you put in here. It's also important to mention that this piece have, will have the same distance here, um, like this ring. So it's exactly the same, uh, but it has this compression ring. So just unscrew this part here. That's the old thing, old part, and that's the new part. Yeah, and that's it. Now you have uh, two screws and this part is with a compression ring. And to do the collimation, uh, I also bought uh, this adapter because uh, that's one and a quarter inch uh, uh, diameter and this is a two inch to one and a quarter inch. And as you can see, this is also using the same, uh, let's call it technique with the compression ring. That's very nice. So move this part. All right. Okay, and that's it. Now we turn on our laser. Yeah, now we will try the collimation. Before you start your actual collimation, uh, make sure that you cannot see the laser beam here coming out uh, in this direction. So I don't want to look into the uh, laser directly. Here you can see different things. That's the secondary mirror right here. That's the focusing tube. And here is the main mirror. And the aim is now to use um, these screws here, um, like this one, this one, and this one, to uh, position your laser beam exactly in the center of this ring on the main mirror. 
now it's uh, yeah top left of the center I would say Man, I'm not gonna lie, so this really took me some time to have this adjusted. Uh, I don't know if you can really see this, uh, but from my perspective, um, the laser beam is exactly in the middle of the marking from the, um, of the main mirror. And that's very nice. So now I have the secondary mirror. Uh, aligned yeah this one and as I said before I used uh, these uh, um, these three screws um, to align the laser in the center of the marking of the main mirror all right so after aligning the uh, secondary mirror and the laser um, I now have to uh, align the main mirror so as you can see the laser beam is now off off center here yeah like this it's off center at the moment and now using the uh, adjustment screws on the main mirror i will show you in a second uh, you have this to bring this laser beam uh, to the center and to do that uh, we have uh, screws here. And this is uh, the actual uh, alignment uh, screw, or well, one of the three here and here. And these screws, uh, elongated screws, are uh, just to fix the position. Uh, so, first using the alignment screws to bring the laser beam to the center uh, of the collimator. This I will do now. Now it's in the center and I just um, tighten these screws here. And now it's aligned or collimated, let's say. And after I aligned the main mirror, uh, I checked again and the laser beam uh, still in the center of the mark of the main mirror. So the telescope is now collimated. Wow, it really took some time uh, to collimate this thing and of course it was, uh, it was the first thing it was for testing and I'm glad I tested it. Uh, but of course you have to do this right before uh, imaging uh, because you still will have some movements of the parts when transporting it and mounting to and um, yeah, attaching to your mount. And of course, you will also have uh, temperature differences. And so you will have uh, movement of all the parts. So I will have to um, yeah, do the collimation again uh, right uh, when, yeah, when starting imaging. It's time to uh, attach my CWO ASI 2600MC Pro uh, color camera, one shot color camera, together with my filter drawer and, and an off axis guider um, to this scope. And for this, we will need uh, um, information about the back focus and different spacers, adapters, and so on. Uh, in the past, I already uh, did a video about back focus. And I really uh, spoke about this and uh, yeah, in detail what it is and so on. So please watch this video. Uh, you will find uh, all information you will need about back focus. To make it very simple, so I have my um, chroma corrector. I will attach it here. So just like that, we attach the screw here. And that's it actually. So now I have my uh, coma corrector. I also, in the last video, I also spoke about coma corrector, uh, what chromatic aberration actually is. So watch this video, please. The important thing here is that from the uh, end of the uh, coma corrector, you will need uh, distance uh, from your sensor 
for example, this camera sensor of 55 millimeters. Okay, and now I want to attach this uh, camera, as I said before, with my CWO um, filter drawer and this off axis guider. You will also need uh, the information about uh, what's the distance from the actual sensor to the end of the housing of this camera. In this case, using the 2600 MC Pro camera, it's 17.5 millimeters. Uh, the filter drawer is uh, 21 millimeter and the off axis guider is 16.5 millimeter. And this gives you um, your 55 millimeter you need. So you don't need uh, more uh, spacers. And now you actually just have to attach this, uh, these parts. I just saw I have some dust here, so I'm, I'm using this blower. Don't use your mouth uh, because you will have some humidity. Uh, so just remove the dust here. Yeah, looks very nice. Uh, we will need the filter drawer. And we will need our off axis guider. Um, first, I will remove this cover here from the coma corrector and reducer. 0.95 uh, X reducer. I think I will take the coma corrector. This is M48 and this is M48 as well. So you just screw the coma corrector here. All right, tight and you have no, no light leak and it's, you have no uh, additional uh, distance here. So, okay, nice. That's the coma corrector. Now I uh, attach the off axis guider here. Uh, it's a two inch connection, M48. And here I have a M42 to M48 ring. Just attach it here. And this will add no uh, further um, distance because you will just screw in the next part. Um, then we have our part from the filter drawer. This is now M48. This is M48 as well. So just attach it here. All right. I don't care if the filter goes down. Maybe it's actually better because we have this thing here in the way. So actually that's very nice. You will have your um, your magnets anyways. And yeah. Yeah, so now we have our coma corrector, we have the off axis guider, we have our filter drawer, and now you just need to attach your camera to this end. And that's M42 as well, like this part. And you just have a marriage here. <laughs> yeah, try not to touch this lens, of course, from the coma corrector. And that's it. Uh, what's also important here, um, I removed the coma corrector. What's also important is uh, now you still have some movement here. Um, course you have to tighten these screws here. So what's also important is uh, now the camera sensor, I hope you can see this, is like this and the prism of the off axis guider is now uh, not well aligned. So here you have the sensor and there you should also have the uh, prism on the side of the sensor. So that's why we should uh, have to rotate this off axis guider here to have a good alignment to the to the sensor it goes like this direction and the prism should be here um, as you can see now uh, we have a good alignment here hope you can see this now you can see this I think um, 
So we have the sensor goes in this direction and we have the uh, prism of the off-axis guider orientated on this side of the sensor. Hope you can see this. And now just uh, reattach the coma corrector. And that's it. Actually, pretty easy. Now I reattach the coma corrector here. Uh, I also um, inserted the filter, the, the filter drawer. And actually, when it comes to alignment of the sensor to this off axis guider, it's actually uh, very nice because the name of the camera can see here is also aligned to the orientation of the camera so now you know the camera sensor will be also like this or uh, orientated like this and as you can see the um, off-axis guider is really very nice aligned to the side so the prism yeah but this is not a tutorial how to use the off-axis guide. That's also for me the first time. Most probably I also have to realign the, um, the prism inside. I just showed you because it should be, of course, you should collect some light uh, coming here. Collect some light to have your uh, guiding camera here attached and to get some light for the guiding. But of course it should not be too low, otherwise you will see uh, shadows or other artifacts uh, in your uh, picture. So this I have to try. I think first I will leave it like this, most probably, the prism. I will attach my uh, CWO SI 120mm mini guiding cam here and I will just see from test shots and then I know. And that's it. And now you just uh, Reattach the whole thing here. Yeah, so here we have it. Uh, we attached our electronic focuser here. Uh, we also switched the ori original position of the focusing unit here to have the electronic focuser on this side and not on the on this side. Uh, yeah, to the opening of the telescope, and we also uh, attach the camera. Uh, yeah, the coma corrector, filter drawer, and an off axis guider with the distance here from the coma corrector of 55 millimeter to the sensor of this camera, so called back focus. And that's it, actually. Um, that's all uh, for today. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, to, yeah, to show you how to pimp this a little bit and how to attach your camera with the wide back focus distance and so on. And yeah, hopefully, most probably, uh, I have the chance to test the scope for the very first time uh, this night. And yeah, I cannot wait to make some uh, test shots. And yeah, so thank you for watching and see you next time. Clear skies.